Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. I had seen some people make a card where they made the inside of the card have one of these lights in it. And I started thinking about it, and I thought, I could do that. Yeah, okay, well, the first time it was a big struggle, and I'll show you the problem I had. This is really key, and in case you try anything like this, this will be something for you to learn in the future. What I want to do is I wanted to have a house on the outside of a box, basically, put vellum behind it, and then inside the box I would have lights. I'm going to have two rows of lights. Here's the problem. When I did this, first of all, the foil I used didn't work. The second thing I did wrong is I put the I put the house on the wrong side of the paper, so the die cut is actually backwards. That normally doesn't make that big a deal, but in this case it definitely does because it's very um, ornate. So the the edges that are kind of rounded are on this side, clearly not on the back, which is what I wish having to show. So I had to start over again and that's okay because I cut the, the, the bottom the wrong size anyway. I decided this time I was going to go with black paper. So I cut my paper to eight and a half inches, which of course you don't have to cut it at all, by nine and a half inches. And then what I'm going to do, I scored it at one and five eighths on all four sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut on our score lines up to the score, the big score, and then we're going to just cut a little piece out of there so that we have more of a professional look. So you're going to cut so that your um, score line basically is gone because we don't want that weird raised bump in our card. Well, it's really going to be an ornament, I think, in the end because it's not going to be something you can fold and I don't think you could make it into um, something sm small enough to be in an envelope, but maybe we'll we'll look at it when we're done. I don't really know. I know it's going to be one and five eighths inches tall, so and it can't be folded. So those are some iffy parts to this card that make it an ornament. If you're with me, so we need to do that on all four sides because we are going to make it into a box. The other reason we had to do it is because we need to make sure that when we cut this that all of these are out of our way. And we want to put our die cut on this side, and I'm going to tell you why. Can you see these, the, the score marks are raised on this side. We want them uh, raised on this side so that when we fold it down we have a nice looking score mark on our box. And we're going to put our house higher because we want a sentiment down below. And I think the sentiment we're going to use is the word joy. I'm also going to put it a little bit off to one side because I want to put a very thin tree that I already cut. This little tree, I think, I want to put somewhere in the front of the card. So um, that's why we're going to do what we're going to do so far. I'm also going to cut this little flower pot out. I think it's kind of odd to have in there for winter. So we'll, once we die cut this, then we'll get rid of that pot. I'm going to take some washi tape, and um, if you use washi tape to to put your to hold down a die, rub it on not only your clothes but rub it on your skin to get rid of some of that extra stick because it will really adhere well to your project and you don't want it to tear your paper. I mean the last thing you want is to put all this time into this and then once you do the die cutting realize that it just ripped the paper. Now when you run it through you're going to have to fold these back on the house so that they don't get cut because it makes it too wide otherwise. You with me? And you will end up with an impression on it can you see that right there, that house impression? If you can't see that impression, it will leave an impression, but that's okay because we're covering all four sides with uh, paper, decorator paper. I don't really want a black ornament. Anyway, that's my scoop. I'll cut this and I'll be back. So the next thing I'm going to do, I here's my house I cut out. The next thing I did was I cut my um, paper that I'm going to cover the whole outside with. I cut it to 
six and a quarter by five and a quarter, which is what my top square is. So what I'm going to do is I cut the paper so that it would fit exactly in the the spot where the top of the ornament will be. And I put a little bit of washi tape on it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pencil and you're going to draw marks of where your house is because you want to be able to cut out um, out of our background paper. You want to cut out the house in exactly the right spot. So I'm just kind of cutting some of the more important aspects and then we'll just untape it and you're going to, you, I don't know if you can see it or not, you're going to take that same washi tape that you used before because it's already not very sticky and that's important and then we're going to lay our house down. I got a, another piece of washi that I saved from the first time. So now we're going to run it through again and then that will make it so that our paper will fit on the front of our card. So I already put some tear tape on the back and I did have to cut this down. I forgot that I had to cut it down so that I had a border on the outside. So it's six and a quarter by five and a quarter. I put all this information down below. I'm sure if you watch my videos you know that I write everything in the information at the bottom because I don't trust the closed captioning that they use for uh, my hearing impaired viewers so I want to make sure that if you can't follow what I tell you in the video that you'll be able to follow it by reading what I explain in the notes and hopefully um, that'll be something that will work for you if you can't follow what I'm talking about because sometimes I don't make a lot of sense as you already know if you watch my channel and I put tear tape all around the edges of this and now I'm just putting some wet glue around it so in case I need to move anything after I put it down that I have the opportunity to do that because the the um, tear tape once it has a little bit of wet glue on it will give you the room to wiggle it around if you have to and I'm just adding a little bit more glue just to the edges where the tape is just as a saving grace in case I screw it up okay so you're gonna make sure that this is lined up exactly with the front of your your house, your cut out of your house. Okay, there is our base. Now we can uh, go on to doing the uh, the rest of it, but I think what I would rather do. Oh, by the way, I cut out a white one too because I want to layer my black one with a white one on top of it. So I'm going to do that. When I cut this this paper I wanted to make sure that everything would um, line up properly so what I did was I hold on I cut the paper so that it would be lined up on my on these sides like whoops wrong one like this and the reason I did that was because I wanted to be sure that everything, uh, you know, as a box, that the box looked exactly right. So all I did was this. I took an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper. I cut it to eight and a half by nine and a half, like my black paper is. Then all I did was I cut off one and five eighths from each, from the two ends first, and then one and five eighths from the bottom, one and five eighths from the top. That way, it ensures you that these will all match up exactly. Now, you want to have a little bit of a border on your um, edges, and um, I usually do a quarter inch around the sides. So what you're going to want to do remember it's laying like this I put it on purpose laid it down on purpose so you could see this <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to take that quarter inch off and when you take the quarter inch off what you want to take it off the outer the outer edge so I'm gonna move it a quarter of an inch and hold it in place and then took off that outer edge then on this one <coughs> excuse me you're going to want to take off this edge because that is the furthest away from your project. Again, I'm just moving it a quarter of an inch. So, one of an inch, two right there. 
and I'm just trying to make sure that it's not uneven when I lay it down. Okay, and then I can put it back. I'm going to have to cut off uh, some of that edge too because it's not, um, it's too long. Okay, then I'm going to do on this on the bottom, I need to cut the bottom edge off. I hope that this isn't too repetitive for you. I just want to make sure you kind of understand why I'm doing what I'm doing because um, I get really confused when I'm cutting papers and I like to make sure that when I get to this part of it that I've thought it through to the point that I know exactly where my paper is and the easiest way for me to do it is to lay it down on my project like this and then that way I know where it's laying on the project so I know <coughs> excuse me where it's going to end up on in my end in my end result okay hopefully those are all going to be right Okay, I'm cutting off one and seven eighths from both ends. So let me cut this one. Cutting off seven eighths. Then five inches is what I want. All right. Now I think what I'll do is I'll glue down. I'll glue my pieces down and I think I'll also glue down the um, piece of vellum that goes on the back <clears throat> and that way we'll be sure that uh, the house will stay in place on it. I'm just going to put tear tape on all of these. Let me do this. Put the tear tape on all of these and then uh, take the backing off of it and then I'll come back and we'll, we'll um, go on to the vellum part and building the back of our box because the back of our box is a little bit different and it might be a little confusing because we're going to have a, um, a sh two shelves in there and I don't want that to be too tricky. I made this design myself I think I already said that so uh, you won't see it anywhere else and if you do I hope they do copy it it would make me really happy. I hope all of you copy it too because it is kind of a frisky thing to do. All right, instead of finishing the top, I decide I better do the bottom because we need to put our magnets on. We're going to put magnets on the top and the bottom of the box so that it holds the it holds it closed, uh, you know, when it's on the tree or in general. Okay, I'm attached to that. I got to get that off me. Okay. And so I made a piece of paper to line the bottom of the box. This is the bottom. And I put tear tape on the um, end so that we can put it together. So that's the bottom of the box. Now, on the top of the box, I have these teeny tiny magnets. I bought these magnets thinking that they would be bigger than this, but uh, you know, that centimeter thing, I'm just terrible at that. So I'm going to put. Um, one of them at this end and one of them at that end so that they're you know f they're spaced far enough apart so that we can hold this together but that's my plan right now then what I'm going to do before I or once I um, put my tear tape under these is I'm going to put um, the, the top of it I'm going to put the second magnet on top of it so that they're attached and we know that they're in the right place. So you're just going to get a teeny bit of tear tape. You're going to put it underneath where you're going to want your magnet. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. It doesn't matter that they're not um, in the same spots on um, either side. What matters is that uh, because these aren't are going to be on the other part of the box, so it doesn't matter that they're um, the, that these are a little bit higher than these. I hope that made sense. Okay, so let's build the bottom of our box. Okay, now we're going to take a little bit of our wet glue and do the same thing we did before because we want to make sure that if I lay it in the wrong spot, we have some glue to um, be able to move it around with wet glue. Okay. So again, our folds are right there. 
we're going to fold our side up, and fold this side up, and fold both of our sides up 90 degrees. It's better if you can kind of fold them down. Then you're going to take your side flap, fold it up to 90 degrees, and then you're going to attach it like that so that your box is perfect 90 degrees. I had one of my viewers tell me that they really wanted me to make one of these lighted boxes and I I have been putting it off and putting it off and now's the time. I'm over it now. I'm going to do it. So then you're going to want to cover. We're going to cover our the, the top and let's cover the ends of this box so that we're sure that this is evened out. We're not going to uh, cover the bottom and the top yet because we need to put our magnets on the bottom and the top, obviously. Okay, now my top and my bottom are where we're going to place the magnets, and we're going to place those underneath. So let's do all of our folding that we did before on the that we did on the bottom of our box, just to make sure that everything can bend to 90 degrees. The next thing we want to do is decide if this is going to be right. So I'm going to put it on the top of on my box and see how we did size-wise. Oh, it looks pretty good, I think. There's a little bit extra room at top and bottom, but I, and I put that in there for the magnets. So I think we're in good shape. Okay. I wonder if I should put another magnet at the bottom. Before I commit and glue down my paper, it kind of makes sense that we get all of our magnets where we need them. And a set of magnets there. That way, our box should stay together. It doesn't matter if I've got glue in the inside of my box like I'm picking at. That doesn't really matter because um, the inside of the R box is going to have cardboard and all kinds of wacky things in it because we need to have a place to hold our, um, our lights. And we're going to have two of those in there if I didn't already say that. Okay, so I need to make uh, pieces that are going to be long enough um, for our sides. So let me measure this and get my sides going and I'll be back as soon as I have those cut. Well I hate skipping around and confusing you but I needed to put the piece of vellum inside my opening on the top of the card before I forgot and it's a little bit under six and a quarter by a little under five and a quarter inches. It's just um, big enough it in our slot and and I put a lot of tear tape there and a lot of wet glue because you with this vellum I want to make sure it's really well adhered and that it's that you know that that I'll be able to have the card work well okay I think I think I'm gonna my magnets, I probably should glue on the inside. Unless they're really, really strong. Uh, I'm going to glue them on the inside. We're living on the edge. So I'm going to glue down my um, papers that go on the top of this before I lose them or have a malfunction. When I did my embossing, my because the, the embossed image shows up there. It just looks a little weird. Um, I'm hoping that we'll be able to cover enough of it that you won't see it. Now I probably can put it together, the box, I, but I think before I do that I want to 
put my two houses together and I'm going to just do this with some wet glue and um, hopefully the wet glue will hold it all. It should. Okay, pretty good. My next step, let me get this out of the way for just a second. My next step is to get rid of this plant. I don't like it. So then I just have to kind of get that evened out. There. I like it a lot better without the plant. I just thought the plant in winter just didn't seem like that was appropriate. And so I'm going to glue it, glue the black, black one down. Just to make sure our house is. Alright, so I guess I'm going to build my box now. So now we're going to glue together the top of the box. I'm just putting a little bit of wet glue, just making sure. You know the rule. You don't want to have anything come unglued or have it stick when I don't want it to in places that I don't want it to. So we're just going to quickly put a little glue on the spots where... Okay. So I'm going to fold this edge down and make sure it's glued in place right like that. I'm going to hold them for just a second. Do the same these, hold them down. Okay, so that's how we stand so far. And then here are the little magnets that we're going to stick in. And that gives us the extra room. I'm going to put my um, adhesive this is probably going to be a mistake, but I'm going to do it anyway. I know if you're if you're sitting there going, oh no, don't do it, Sandy. I'm sorry, I'm still doing it. It's probably going to be wrong, but we're doing it. I'm going to put a little bit of tear tape on the back of my magnets. And then what we'll do is once um, once we have them on, we can put the top of the box on, and hopefully that'll work. Probably won't, but it's the only way I know to do it. To make sure that they really stay attached. I'm going to try putting them in. I'm going to push it down as much as I can. All the way in. And in the meantime, I have this tree. I think I'm going to put it right there. Ease in, secure in for good. Next thing I want to do, I have this joy that I want to put on the bottom if it fits. And I'm going to put it on a piece of this green that's this color. This green. I thought it would look nice if I did that. So I'm going to measure my letters and see how tall they are and then I'm going to make my whoo, just dropped it and then I'm going to make my little banner for them hold it down a little bit Now, in the meantime, what I want to do is I'm going to try, I cut some cardboard to go inside. And the way, what I want to do with it, hopefully, is make sure, I want to get my light so that it will 
be exactly the right height. And so what I did was I scored my cardboard. Okay, then I have to do another shelf. So let's put this shelf in. What I'm doing is I'm lining these up so that when I put in the shelves, they'll have a light in certain areas of the house. And the light will shine through. So I got my first light bulb in and it's in the right place and everything works good. So then now we're going to put the second one in and uh, we're going to try and lay it pretty close to uh, the light bulb on the bottom floor we'll call it. So we're going to just lay this in. Oops, I have it going the wrong way. I'm just going to lay it in like that. And I have my glue or my tear tape on here already. And I just want to make sure it's well adhered. Hopefully it's straight enough that it'll stay. And I put some glue dots there. Okay, let me shut out some of the lights so you can see this. Can you see the two lights flickering in there? Hopefully. Hold on. There's another light I can turn out. Now you can see it. Fun, huh? I did all right. Well, I mean, it's not great because I still haven't figured out the magnet problem, but I think it looks kind of cute. I do have some more decorations I want to put on the front. I'll show you the dies that I have that I am thinking of using. Here is one of the dies I'm thinking of using. It's a little, a uh, little bow and I thought I could put it like right there. So I have this gold wire and I'm going to put some, I don't know if you can see these little Christmas bulbs, and then I thought I would put some of these red pearls on my tree. So I'm going to do those first. Just kind of lay them on the branches. Ooh. And then I wasn't sure if I should just do what I was going to do, I have this gold twine or ribbon, whatever we'll call it. I thought I would put it down and then I thought I would glue these to it. So I cut out a bunch of the bows and so I thought what I would do, they're this big. They're not very big so I didn't think they would be too terrible to put on the windows but I'm going to start with the biggest windows so that in case these, you know, the, in case the bows don't look right we can always move them, put them right. Let's just put one right there and see what we think. And all we have to do is put a ribbon around the outside and get my uh, magnets to stay stuck. So I'll work on those and we'll get this all um, straightened out and then we'll be back. Okay, the very last thing we need to do is make a bow to go around, well, a ribbon to hold it on the tree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ribbon and I'm going to tie a knot in the very top of it so that we can hang, hang a hanger from it. And here's what I do when I make these kinds of bows. I just take, I take this and I go, I'm trying to make sure it's straight. Just going to keep going around the box. Oh, a little bit crooked there. And then on this part, 
you don't have to have it meet in the very top center because that's where your bow is going to hang from or your tie is going to be. Just want to make sure it's laid down properly. And then we're going to take it all off, which is probably a mistake, but we're going to do it that way anyway. I'm going to lay it down, which is an even bigger mistake. I put that. Hopefully you can see this part. Just want to make sure everything is as straight as you can make it. I think I'm going to maybe overlay that. I just want to make sure that that looks right. And then I'm going to put a little bit of tear tape under that section. I'm going to shut out the lights so you can see it. There it is with the lights out. I think it's kind of cute. I hope that you enjoyed this and that you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love it. And please try this. It was fun. I really enjoyed making it. And for those of you who wondered how I got those magnets to stay in there, I did the, I added another piece of paper over them. I don't know if you can see that. I added another piece of paper so that it covered both sides. So that is our project and I hope you'll give it a shot. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.